I am Laura Dixon, and you are listening to the Naturally Thin for Life podcast, episode number 76, How to Stop Binging. Welcome to the Naturally Thin for Life podcast. I'm going to teach you how to get out of your diet brain so that you too can be naturally thin for life. No counting, restricting, or obsessing. I am going to take the mystery out of it for you so that you can become naturally thin starting today. Are you ready? Let's do this. Hello, friends. Welcome back to the podcast. Today, we're going to talk about binging. And I want to caveat this before we get started and spend a minute on who this podcast episode is for and who it is not for. So first of all, I want to say many people describe themselves as, oh, I binged, or I had a binge last night, or I'm a binger, or maybe compulsively overeating both with and without being diagnosed. So some people do have a diagnosis of binge eating disorder. And Mayo Clinic describes binging as this. These are the bullet points and the way that they describe it. Eating unusually large amounts of food in a specific amount of time, such as over a two hour period. Feeling that your eating behavior is out of control. Eating when you're full or not hungry, eating rapidly during binge episodes, eating until you're uncomfortably full, frequently eating alone or in secret, feeling depressed, disgusted, ashamed, guilty, or upset about your eating, frequently dieting, possibly without weight loss. Now, I was never personally diagnosed with binge eating disorder, but I checked every single one of those boxes that I just read to you. But I was like, describes it exactly to me. So here's what I want to say. If you binge and then purge, or you aren't able to function because of your eating, because of your compulsive overeating, or because of your bingings, or you have feelings of wanting to harm yourself, and binging is one of the several ways you bring yourself harm, you should definitely seek some medical professional help. And I would highly suggest working with a therapist who specializes in this type of work. So this podcast episode is not necessarily for those of you if you feel like the way you're eating is incredibly impacting and diminishing your life. This episode is for you if you feel like you maybe check some of those boxes I read to you and you feel out of control at times when you eat, but you're still highly functioning. You feel the discomfort of overeating, and you probably get down on yourself about it, and you feel the shame, and you feel the embarrassment of the binging, but the binging or the overeating is not preventing you from getting out of bed, going to work, and taking care of your kids. So I just want to make that clear. For me, binging, I was did every single one of those, ate a lot of food when I wasn't hungry, felt really guilty and really ashamed about it, but I would still wake up in the morning and go to work and still be very successful in my career. Now, of course, in my mind, did it take a mental toll? A hundred percent. But it didn't prevent me from showing up in my life. Did it prevent me from showing up in my life in the way I wanted to show up? Yes. When I was on my own weight loss journey, I started focusing on all the ways I could eat, quote unquote, perfectly during the day. I'd be like, all right, I'm going to tweak this here and I'm going to tweak this here and I'm going to have this for lunch and I'm going to have this for breakfast and I'm going to change this. And it wasn't until I was reading a book by someone who said, if you binge or compulsively overeat or overeat excessively, say at night, you have to focus on that one thing first until that desire to binge is gone. Put all of your attention there because it doesn't matter how well you eat during the day. It only takes one binge to throw it all away. Of course, that thought was already in the back of my mind, but hearing it from someone else really got me to say, okay, okay, this makes sense. Tweaking this little thing here and this little thing there during the day isn't going to move the needle on my weight if I then binge at night. One more handful of peanut M&Ms can easily outdo whatever I tweak during the day, can easily outdo the extra 30 minutes of exercise. But what's more is the mental toll that binging and compulsively overeating takes on your mind, on your emotional well-being, and your physical well-being. 
If you binge or excessively overeat, especially in the evenings, I want you to think about just focusing on that. Even if you don't binge or you don't compulsively overeat, but you just have a tendency to overeat, say, every weekend, then focus on that. Take the one habitual pattern of overeating that is the most predominant for you and focus on changing only that. Because what will happen is you will create so much more change so much more quickly. And then the skill that you develop in changing your binging behavior, in changing your compulsive overeating behavior, in changing your Sunday fun day eating behavior will make every other change you make so much easier. There is a great book called brain over binge that you should read if you struggle with binging. But here today, I'm going to share with you why I binged and how I got to the place where I now have zero desire for it and how I've helped other women stop binging. The primary reason for binging is that emotions build up in your body during the day and you ignore them, you resist them. And when you do that, it's like putting those emotions that you don't want into a pressure cooker and they build and build to the point that you feel so uncomfortable. You think the only way to feel a sense of relaxation or reprieve from that buildup is with the food. Pressure, anxiety, and stress are the three most common emotions that build up that I experience myself and that I've seen in other women, but it can be any emotion you are trying to ignore. Maybe it's devastation or loss or sadness. But on the regular, I see pressure and anxiety and stress building up throughout the day for women. And then we think the only way to escape from that is with food. So these emotions, they build and they keep building and they cause you to feel so out of control in your own skin and uncomfortable in your own body that then what's happened is you've trained your brain to believe that eating is the only answer. Eating is the only way to escape that. So then you feel so out of control. You think the only way to feel in control is to eat food, which is ironic because you feel out of control in your eating which then only compounds the out-of-controlness. This is how I felt. I was like, I feel so out of control in my own body. I feel so out of control with my anxiety and the pressure and the stress. So now I'm going to think that I'm going to feel more in control by eating the food. But what really happened is I would feel more and more out of control with the food. It would really just compound and it would begin that cycle of binging. Because as you start to eat the food when you're not hungry, And because you're overeating, your body starts to send your brain signals of discomfort, trying to tell your brain, hey, this body, we're good. We don't really want the food. (laughs) But you've learned how to turn off your brain-body connection and keep eating. You maybe completely feel like you step out of your own body. You disassociate from your body. It's like you've told your brain, I don't care what my body is telling me right now. Just tell it to shut up. I don't want to listen to it. And this is why so many of us binge in front of the TV or driving or with other distractions, because the more distractions you have, the easier it can be to turn off that brain-body connection. Then, not only do you tell your brain to stop hearing your body's signals of discomfort, but then you start to have some shame and guilt, regret, embarrassment, all of the negative feelings that come up as you start to compulsively overeat, as you start to binge. As you feel more and more of these emotions, you create more and more emotional discomfort. So you started with the emotional discomfort of, let's say, pressure and anxiety building up all day. You overeat or you started to binge and now you have the emotional discomfort of the pressure and the anxiety and the physical discomfort of overeating. Then you layer more emotional discomfort on top of the existing pressure and anxiety, and now the physical discomfort of the overeating. And now you've added on top of that some regret and shame. So then you're feeling so much emotional and physical discomfort that your brain believes, well, remember, the only answer is to eat food. That's the only thing that's going to help us with this. So then you decide to eat more and more. And the cycle continues. You continue to disassociate from what your body is telling you. You stack on more and more uncomfortable emotions. And then your brain's like, well, this is getting worse. We should probably eat more. And the cycle continues. This is why it often happens for hours on end. For me, it used to look like, okay, I'm going to sit down and watch TV. I would tell myself, I'm going to be good tonight. I'm not going to binge tonight. I'm not going to overeat. 
I'm just going to have a couple tortilla chips while I'm watching this TV show. And then it would be like, well, maybe some crackers. Now, I think I'll just have a handful of peanut M&Ms, but the whole bag makes its way to the couch and then it's gone. And now I think I'll have some ice cream. Then some more chips and then some more ice cream and then maybe some more peanut M&Ms and handfuls and bowls of food at a time. And it would literally go on for a couple of hours. Then I would go to bed so mad at myself and wake up with a massive food hangover, so bloated and constipated, and my face would be puffy. And I would say to myself, I'm swearing off eating this morning. I'm not eating the rest of the day. I'm just not eating today. And I would tell myself, this is the last time I ever do this. And think about when you tell yourself all of those things. I'm not eating today. This is the last time I'm ever doing this. I can't do this again. All of those thoughts create more pressure and more anxiety and more stress, which is what started the binge in the first place. And so then here we go again. Night would roll around and maybe I would like willpower or white knuckle my way through for a night, but definitely within a few days later, another variation of that same experience would occur. So this is why it feels so impossible to get out of because it's this cycle where we feel so much emotional discomfort. It builds up. We think the only answer is food. We decide to eat and then we feel physical discomfort and then we add more emotional discomfort and then we think the only answer is food. And then we wake up the next day and we're so mad at ourselves and we have all the regret and the shame and the embarrassment. And then we try to use pressure again to stop eating, which is really what had you eating in the first place, that buildup of pressure and anxiety all throughout the day. And then we're like, why is this so difficult to get out of this cycle? It's because you are trying to use a solution of pressure, which is really what's created the binge in the first place. Now, for you, it may be a slightly different emotional experience. And for me, it would maybe change with different emotions. But whatever it was, it would build up throughout the day. And I would think the only answer was food. It would compound and the spiral would continue. The most common reason for binging that I have seen in women and myself, especially for those of us that are type A, analytical, brilliant women, we're able to be really successful, is the buildup of emotions throughout the day and specifically the pressure, anxiety, and stress. I believe this type of personality and brain, we have a really high capacity to function with high amounts of pressure, anxiety, and stress. And you often use that during your workday to create results for yourself. You even tell yourself, maybe, I do great under pressure. I do great under stress. Side note, I'm actually going to do another podcast on how you don't need any of those to create the results you want in your life and how when you use them less and less, you actually create more of what you want. But for now, let's just agree that many of us are able to operate under high amounts of pressure, stress, and anxiety in a way that we think, even if it's not maybe accurate, even in a way that we think creates the success that we want. So the only reason you want to eat when you aren't hungry is to feel better. Whether it's binging or whether it's eating a second serving of dinner, it doesn't matter. The only reason ever you ever, ever want to overeat, to eat past the point of being satisfied, to eat when you aren't hungry, is to feel better. But here's the thing. It's actually a lie that the food helps you feel better. Your brain just thinks it's true. It thinks it's like reporting the news that the food helps you feel better. If you did feel better with food, then you wouldn't regret overeating because you would feel so great. But the food doesn't actually help you feel better. You only think it does because eating directs your brain to the food rather than the emotional discomfort that you're trying to feel better from. Now, yes, there is a dopamine hit that you probably get because you're not binging on carrots, <laughs> but you're usually eating a bunch of manufactured junk but that feeling better, and I say, quote unquote, feeling better while you're eating is so fleeting. And that emotion that you think you're going to feel better from hasn't actually left your body. It may morph from pressure to regret, but you don't automatically feel great because of the food and all is not well in the world forever. If the food really made you feel better, if that was the case, then you would be able to eat one small bowl of ice cream or one handful of M&Ms and you wouldn't need to keep going back for more. 
The only reason you need to keep going back for more is because the food doesn't actually make you feel better. You only believe that lie that it does. Overeating and binging cause so much physical and mental discomfort. You think the food will alleviate the buildup of pressure and anxiety to help you experience some calm and decompression. So it's that buildup of emotion that starts the cascade, and then it's a buildup of other emotions that keeps the cascade going. All overeating is because you want to feel better. But the difference with binging is that it feels really out of control. It feels compulsive. I would always describe it as if someone else's hands are putting food into my mouth. It literally felt like I could not stop. Like I was in my body, but then really I was like standing over to the side, just watching it as if I had no control over what was happening. The difference between binging and overeating is the intensity of that out of control feeling. And that out of control feeling is directly correlated to the intensity of the buildup of the emotion. So how you solve for this is to slow down and prevent that buildup of emotion in the first place. And then if it does build up to know what to do in that moment of intensity before a binge and how to interrupt it from continuing with particular emotional tools. There are two places I start with all of my clients when they binge. The first is developing the skill of feeling that urge, that compulsion to eat in your body by acknowledging it and actually letting it pass through you. The buildup of emotions, including the urge to eat, comes from ignoring it and resisting it. So when you acknowledge that emotion, including the urge to eat, and you understand that all of your feelings, including that desire, that urge to eat, and I think about desire to eat is kind of like a low level desire, and an urge to eat is like a strong pulling towards the food, and then the compulsion kind of takes that to the next level, where it's like a really, really strong urge to eat. Whether you're feeling the desire to eat, an urge to eat, or a compulsion to eat, when you stop fighting that feeling in your body, but you acknowledge it and you understand that all of those emotions come from your own thoughts and you stop judging yourself for then creating those emotions, you know how to recognize them and actually let them pass through your body, you prevent the buildup. And even if they have then built up, But you go through that same process of acknowledging them and letting them pass through your body. You put a pause button on the eating. This is a skill that once you learn, it takes about 90 seconds in the moment of an intense urge or a compulsion to eat. Then here is the magical part. And I call it magical because I never thought I would be able to say that I have zero desire to binge. It doesn't even cross my mind. It's not something that I even think about like at all. It takes up zero space in my brain. Overeating to any point of physical discomfort is just not something I struggle with. And I used to think this would be a lifelong struggle, but it isn't. And so that's why I call it magical. But here's the magical part. When you learn how to feel better without needing anything but your own brain and body, you don't need any other substitute. You don't need to go for a walk or read a book or go to bed early. Of course, you can still do all of those things, but you don't need them to feel better. This is the freedom of being naturally thin because there is no battle. And how you feel better without needing anything other than your own brain and your body, and especially without needing food, is when you learn how to feel your feelings and let them pass through your body so they don't build up. When you learn the skill of actually feeling a feeling in your body on purpose, deliberately, with a step-by-step process, and it goes through your body, you don't need anything to escape from that. The second skill is learning how to prevent the buildup in the first place. So you learn the skill of when you feel that intense urge, that intense compulsion, that intense desire to eat, you learn how to let that pass through your body, but then you learn how to take that same skill and really prevent the buildup in the first place. So as you're experiencing pressure, as you're experiencing anxiety, as you're experiencing stress, 
you let those emotions pass through your body so that they don't even build up, so that there's no intense desire to overeat in the evening at all. So that's taking that same skill I just described of that intense urge, of that intense compulsion to eat, and applying it to the pressure and the stress throughout the day. What happens then is you feel calmer and you feel more relaxed during the day, so your brain stops searching and anticipating the binge or the overeating to give you the calm, to give you the relaxation. You actually get to just give it to yourself. The amount of mental and physical energy you save doing this creates so much more time in your day. You might not think it would create that much more time, but when you don't battle with the emotions you experience throughout the day and you spend no time planning exactly what you're going to eat and how you're going to overeat and when you're going to do it so no one's watching and you're going to eat this and you're going to eat that, when you don't do any of that, you create so much more time than you can probably even imagine until you experience that freedom. The mental and physical energy that is drained, especially when you binge and compulsively overeat, but really with any overeating, takes such a toll. And so the freedom of being naturally thin is when you have no desire to overeat, when you have no desire to binge and you get to feel amazing and comfortable and energized in your body. And then you're not filled with all of the mental discomfort on top of the overeating. You get the mental freedom and the physical freedom. I'm going to play something for you from one of the women in the Naturally Thin for Life program. Her name is Celia, and she lost 10 pounds in her first five weeks after she joined. And this is what she has to say about the emotional eating. I had no idea that emotional eating was controlling my life at the level that it was. I had heard the term emotional eating before, but I didn't really know what it meant at all. And Learning the feeling of emotional hunger in my body and the difference between that and physical hunger has created so much freedom for me in learning how to listen to my body and feed my body and lose weight and keep it off. And so what I would say is the connection and the relationship with my body that I have now is completely different. It's transforming every single day and every day is an adventure and a journey with my body because I understand it more and we have a harmonious relationship now rather than having that difficult challenging, frustrating relationship that we used to have when everything felt out of control. So connecting with my emotions and understanding them and how they cause me to want to eat has created so much freedom because I know that I don't have to eat when I feel emotional anymore. I want more than anything to help you experience the mental and physical freedom that comes when you aren't battling yourself, when you have no desire to overeat, when you have no desire to binge. And I will help you develop this skill inside the Naturally Thin for Life program. Preventing that buildup of emotions, letting that urge to eat pass through your body is the freedom of being naturally thin. So make sure you join Naturally Thin for Life now. There's a limited time bonus you get when you join. You get the five pounds gone quick start. So make sure you join this month in June. When you join, this will be the last time and the last summer you ever worry or think about losing weight again. So don't wait. I will see you there. Make sure you listen to the outro to learn how to join Naturally Thin for Life. Friends, have an amazing day, and I will talk with you all next week. Friends, if you are loving what you are learning here on the podcast, you have to come check out my Naturally Thin for Life program. It is my on-demand lifetime access program where I teach you brand new concepts not taught here on the podcast, and I will walk you through exactly how to implement all of the tools I teach you here so that they become just a part of you. 
you will learn exactly how to understand your specific brain and your specific body so that you become naturally thin for the rest of your life and you no longer struggle with your weight. Inside of the Naturally Thin for Life program, you can also receive live help so that you consistently make progress and reach your goal. I will teach you how to accelerate your naturally thin journey in a sustainable way so that the change becomes permanent. The best part is that it's risk-free. You either love it or I will give you your money back. If you are ready to finally be naturally thin for life, join us at lauradixoncoaching.com forward slash work with me. That's L-A-U-R-A-D-I-X-O-N coaching.com and click on the work with me tab. I cannot wait to see you there.